Tonight, we report on the investigation of a fire near George and the festival that took place at the Gorge Amphitheater this weekend. What's going on in sports, Bob? The East held on to beat the West in the annual All-State football game Friday, and the action heated up at the Afreda Raceway Park on Saturday. Here's a peek at our Weather Center forecast. Good to be with you, everybody. Gorgeous weather out there. I'll let you know in just a few moments if uh, this weather pattern will hang in there for the 4th of July celebrations. I'm Alan Troop. Stay tuned for all of this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Twenty-three people were arrested during the Paradiso Festival at the Gorge Amphitheater over the weekend. The Grant County Sheriff's Office stated the amount of people booked was the same as last year. The majority were arrested on drug-related charges. Two people were arrested for vandalism. The amount of people asking for help decreased from 87 in 2013 to 76 this year. The 911 calls included reports for drugs, trespassing, fraud, theft, and minor traffic crashes and collisions. More than 25,000 people attended the two-day electronic dance festival at the Gorge Amphitheater. A fire at a pellet mill near George is under investigation. Firefighters from Grant County Fire District 3 were dispatched Friday afternoon to a fire in the boiler room at Sun Cure Pellet Mill. The mill makes pellets for, from hay for livestock. Lieutenant David Durfee said firefighters extinguished the blaze within 15 minutes and were able to contain it to the boiler room. No one was injured in the fire. The Grant County Fire Marshal's Office is investigating the cause of the fire. Ford of Moses Lake is expanding their dealership on Pioneer Way. Reporter Jeff Chu has the details. Ford of Moses Lake has plans to renovate and expand the service center and showroom at its South Pioneer Way dealership. Records show that Clary Moses Lake Properties LLC of Longview last week applied for a building permit with the city of Moses Lake. Proposed is the addition of 3,875 square feet to the dealership service center and 1,700 square feet to its showroom and new car delivery space. There will be some parking, landscaping, and site improvements made. Additional work includes grading between 500 and 1,500 cubic yards of fill. The dealership is on 4.4 acres. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Thank you, Jeff. A man is serving more than a year in prison after crashing a car in a Mattawa orchard and injuring a passenger. Patrick Wayena Jr., a 36-year-old Mattawa man, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to vehicular assault. He has two previous convictions for DUI. Wayena was driving a Ford pickup truck with two passengers inside in a Mattawa orchard on May 9th. Witnesses saw him make three donuts in the truck on an orchard road, and when he tried to make a fourth donut, the truck rolled. Law enforcement suspected he had been drinking prior to driving. One of his passengers suffered a broken neck in the crash. Now let's take a look at people currently being sought out by the Grant County Sheriff's Office. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after a short break. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local community since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of these many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. 
Bud Clary Ford Honda is proud to be an automotive leader in our area. Since opening our doors over 54 years ago, we have kept a firm commitment to our customers. We offer a wide selection of vehicles and hope to make the car buying experience as quick and hassle-free as possible. You can trust that we will get you into the car or truck of your dreams. Bud Cleary has an experienced and reliable service and parts department that is open extra hours to help fit our customers' hectic schedules. Come for a test drive today at 1200 South Pioneer Way. We are a proud supporter of Columbia Basin Athletics. Good to be with you, everybody. I'm Ceci Gutierrez with your local weather report brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Let's begin with your headlines from the One News Weather Center. Drier and warmer air mass filtering into the immediate region. Pleasant and seasonable temperatures overnight tonight, but the hottest weather of the year is in store, and that will take place during the next couple of days. The 4th of July looking pretty fine, with some changes also as far as temperatures are concerned. Temperatures topped out around 83 across Ephrata this afternoon, the low around 58, and the sun setting at around 858. Taking a quick look across Moses Lake, temperature maxed out at 83 as well, mid 50s the low, and 857 the sunset. Here's a quick look at the conditions right outside your door with beautiful weather out there, mostly sunny skies, that wind out of the southeast, very light, with readings around the lower 80s. Here's what we can expect during the next couple of days. In the meantime, across the area, dry air mass. But we are anticipating for some precipitation to push into the region as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, but mostly impacting the Cascade area and along southern portions of our state into Oregon. And this precipitation dissipating, but overall, uh, once again, developing and intensifying across the Idaho Panhandle. Now, as we head into this uh, Friday, a cold front will have pushed through the region, giving way to more seasonable temperatures back to the mid-80s. Quick look what we can expect for this Tuesday afternoon across the region with partly to mostly sunny skies. Yakima in the mid-90s, Vancouver around 80 with some cloud cover. And across the Tri-Cities area, beautiful sunny skies with these temperatures on the hot side around the mid-90s. And uh, taking a closer look across the basin with these temperatures around the mid-90s, approximately 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. Similar scenario across Bridgeport with readings expected around 92. Let's take a look at the extended forecast. Now hot temperatures in the next few days. Notice those temperatures near 100, mid to upper 90s for Wednesday, and then a cold front promising to push through the region for Friday, 4th of July, with dry conditions also. And those temperatures heading back down into the upper 80s as we head into the week and could see some mid to upper 80s as late as Friday evening. Now for the weekend, some cloud cover is expected and dry and clear skies once again for Monday. Good to be with you, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with sports. This segment brought to you by your Buck Clary Toyota dealer, Toyota. Let's go places. Hi, Hi Jan. Jan. Welcome to the Toyota Time Sales Event. We're looking for something safe with a really smooth ride. He's a very light sleeper. Oh, the Camry's safe and has a smooth, comfortable ride. Oh, the Camry's oh. perfect. And you're in luck. It's Toyota Time, so it's a great time for a great deal. Yes! <laughs> you can lease a new 2014.5 Camry for $209 a month for 24 months with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance included. Plus, get $1,000 bonus cash. <sighs> Toyota, let's go places. Just when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better, DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind blowing. So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said. <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard like confetti cake, now in a fresh baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's sports. The 15th annual East-West All-State High School football game at Lions Field Friday night was a real defensive battle between the two squads. Joey Zamora connected up with Moses Lake's Brett Mosier about seven minutes into the game to put the East up 6-0. The West mounted one long scoring drive to the East 28 as the first quarter came to an end. 
Two plays into the second 12 minutes of action, Joe Martin picked off a Kevin Thompson pass at the 11 to end the threat. The East took over and drove the length of the field, capped off by a nine-yard TD run by quarterback Kevin Thomas. The two-point conversion was no good, and the East led 12-0. The West started its next possession on its own 31 and moved the pigskin to the East 18 on a couple of big scrambles by Thompson. But a tip pass resulted in an interception, and another West threat ended. Wyatt Shelley returned the favor when he picked off a Thomas pass in the end zone as the half came to an end. The West drove the ball to the East 12 to start the third quarter of play, but the team was denied a third time on two consecutive passes that were defended in the end zone. The West finally got on the board with a little more than eight minutes left in the game when Sterling Tate hit Paydirt from two yards out. The PAT was good and the team was back in at 12-7. The West had three more chances to pull out the win, but was stopped twice on fourth and two inside the East 30 with less than three minutes to go, and then had a desperation pass on its last possession intercepted at the East 44 to end the ball game. The game basically came off without a hitch despite players having just a week to prepare for the competition. Our reporter Sean Wells was on the East sideline during the game for an up-close look at some big hits and key plays. That was a great game. Well, it was another action-packed night at the Afraid of Raceway Park Saturday evening. Brian Getz from Okanagan was able to push the nose of his race car across the finish line on the quarter-mile track just ahead of Brad Morrison to take the main event in the, vic the main of victory event that is in the West Coast Street Stocks. Kelly Oslick from Soap Lake took the checkered flag in the Schaefer Oil Mini Stocks. Ethan Smith of Moses Lake turned back the competition in the Kim Janke State Farm Agent V6 Supercars. And Afreda's Jen Black won the Pioneer Muffler 2 V6 Super Main Event. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. We believe. We believe in home and all the magical things that come with it. We believe in living rooms with forts made from sofa cushions and blankets. We believe in the man cave, the woman cave. And finally, we believe that our calling in life is to find the home that's perfect for you. Coldwell Banker, fulfilling dreams for over a hundred years. As the summer has quickly approached, we all enjoy the family barbecue and kids playing in the sprinkler. However, many drivers are distracted and are seldom focusing on what's important while driving. It could be the random phone call, adjusting your stereo, or the lip gloss check in the mirror. Here at Farmers Insurance, we make sure you understand what coverages fit your needs. The more you know, the better you can plan. My name is Cheryl Kono, and I'm your local Farmers Insurance agent. We are farmers.
Our spotlight story tonight is about basin brews and tunes. The Moses Lake Business Association gave the community a chance to enjoy bands, brews, and barbecue. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Downtown Moses Lake was the place for those who loved local craft beers, live music, and fresh barbecued cuisine. Moses Lake Business Association sponsored the first Basin Brews and Tunes event in Sinkayu Square with picture-perfect weather. Among the food vendors, cherrywood barbecue and roasted corn. Works from local artists and craftspeople were sold along 3rd Avenue. Cover Story, the Lake City Band, and Thief of Hearts performed live on Sinkayu Square stage. And of course, Ten Pin Brewing Company of Moses Lake, Odessa-based Rocky Cooley Brewing, and St. Bridges Brewery of Moses Lake drew locally crafted cool ones in the beer garden. Moses Lake Business Association Executive Director Jasmine de Beaumont said the event was all about luring people to have fun downtown. Our first annual way to kind of kick off the summer here in downtown Moses Lake. We bring in our local breweries, wineries, local bands and food and support our local businesses. Nathan Pack, Business Association President and Association Secretary Jake Boydston came up with the idea. Getting people downtown, that's what our goal is. The event featured eight vendors to complement the music. Our weather's being nice to us, so we're starting to see a, a climb in the amount of people coming through. So if you look behind us, our beer garden's pretty full, which we like seeing that. Um, it's just, you know, real small, kind of right on our hub of our Sinkayu Square, so it's looking beautiful having this many just in this one little area, and we can grow from here on out. People really like the event. Moses Lake Business Association puts on other downtown events throughout the year, ending it with December's Agriculture Appreciation Parade. Yeah, we do have a few other events. Um, a lot of our events are in the fall and the winter, but this is a fun way for us to bring in a summer event. The Business Association encourages all Moses Lake residents to become involved by volunteering their time and talent on committees and projects to promote the downtown business district. The association believes the business district is not only a marketplace, but a center of civic and social activity and a symbol of the community's identity and heritage. Beer garden goers gave St. Bridges the best of show trophy while 10 Pin Brewery came in second and Rocky Cooley was third. De Beaumont estimated that more than a thousand showed for the event. See the association's website at mlbacares.org. I'm Jeff Chu for i 501 News. Thanks, Jeff. We'll be right back after this. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Searching for that perfect place to settle down? Whether you're looking for an elegant single story, spacious two story, or a custom home on acreage, Aho Construction can aid your decision with a streamlined production process that saves time, money, and natural resources. Compare us to other builders and see for yourself what advantages you can get by choosing an Aho home. Our philosophy is that we do things right the first time around. Start planning your dream house today with Aho Construction. Call 509-766-1366. A Moses Lake couple is accused of stealing more than $19,000 in items from a fairway drive home while the owner was asleep. Prosecutors charged Chad Faircloth, a 25-year-old man, and Cicely McFarland, a 24-year-old woman, in Grant County Superior Court with burglary, traffic in, in stolen property, and 10 counts of theft of a firearm. The couple reportedly broke into McFarland's ex-boyfriend's father's home while the victim was sleeping. They allegedly stole 13 firearms along with the television, an Xbox 360, and other stuff. Faircloth and McFarland reportedly took multiple trips to take all the items. They both allegedly told officers they sold some of the firearms to buy methamphetamine. A car top carrier came loose on Interstate 90, causing a car, two SUVs, and a van to collide on Sunday morning. Three people were injured during the multiple car collision just east of the Grant-Kittitas County line. 
Eric Batacchio, a 27-year-old Bonnie Lake resident, was driving west in a silver 2007 Subaru Outback when he allegedly, an object came out of his car top carrier. According to the Washington State Patrol, a black Toyota Highlander slowed to avoid the object and was rear-ended by a beige 1998 Acura TL sedan. A gray 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee collided with the Highlander SUV and a white Chevrolet Uplander van struck the Cherokee. Patacho was not injured, but the state patrol issued him a ticket for driving with an unsecured load. The Uplander driver, a 41-year-old Woodenville resident, and his passengers, a 13-year-old boy and a 9-year-old boy, received minor injuries and were treated at the scene. In Northwest News, a man trying to rescue two stranded hikers fell to his death. J.B. Bryson was training with Skagit County Search and Rescue on Saturday when the two hikers fell and rescuers raced to the scene. As they tried to reach the stranded hikers, Bryson also fell and was killed. His family gathered at his house last night to remember him. One of the hikers was also killed. The second managed to cling to a tree and was rescued. Superintendent of Instruction Randy Dorn is making another attempt to get Washington excused from requirements of the federal No Child Left Behind law. His office has sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Education asking that Washington schools not be required to send letters home to parents explaining that they are not making adequate yearly progress and that kids can transfer to a school that is. Dorn says those letters don't serve any useful purpose because nearly every school in the state is not making adequate yearly progress according to the requirements of the No Child Left Behind law. As of 2014, the federal education law requires that nearly every student is doing math and reading at grade level. If even one kid doesn't pass statewide exams, their school probably won't be making adequate yearly progress. And that's going to do it for us here at i 501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow. What's white and yellow and red all over? If you said the local book telephone directory, the one with the purple sunset on the cover, then you're right. In print and online at statewidewhitebee.com, it features up-to-date local maps, community information, and a calendar of events. With a restaurant dining guide with full local menus and a reverse directory, you're sure to find the number you're looking for. But the Local Book Telephone Directory is the best way to get the information you need. Pick up a copy of the Local Book today or visit statewideyp.com. Game time. Papa's in the house. <laughs> wow, what's all this? I'm all about stats. For instance, have I got some numbers for you. Papa John's, a leader in online ordering. <laughs> you bet, Jim. You were the first pizza company to offer it nationwide. <laughs> What's the secret? Jim, it's the pizza. <laughs> to celebrate our online leadership, get Papa John's new double pepperoni and bacon pizza for just $12. Better ingredients, better pizza. And a better way to get it, PapaJohns.com. Are you looking to improve your or your child's smile? At Casciati Orthodontics, we make it our mission to make braces more affordable and fun. Our business has proudly served the Columbia Basin for over 20 years, and our new conveniently located state-of-the-art facility offers a relaxing environment full of fun activities for the kids. We accept all types of insurance and have convenient payment plans available. Give us a call for a complimentary evaluation, no referral needed, or check us out on the web and make an appointment online.